YouTube. Welcome to Fred's Full Throttle. In today's video, I'm gonna be building a cool suit system for the 24 Hours of Lemons endurance race car that me and my friends have built. What is a cool suit system? Why do you need one for racing? And what is this radioactive looking box next to me? All will be answered. So grab a cup of coffee, find your favorite chair, and let's get into it. As many of you may be aware, endurance racing is pretty much the ultimate test of man and machine. Hours on end, driving at a racing pace with dozens or hundreds of other cars. While Lemons Racing mostly isn't a 24 hour race, as they don't really race overnight, racing for 6 hours one day and 8 hours the other day is still 14 hours of racing back to back. With that, temperatures climb, and the heat management is one of the most crucial factors for teams that even survive to the end of the race, much less stay competitive. Just as the car gets hot, so does the driver. First, the car itself is hot. With all the insulation, sound dampening, and creature comforts removed, the longer the car is running, the hotter the chassis and everything attached to it gets. The car doesn't have any air conditioning, and in fact only has heat for the defroster in case we get rain and the windows fog up. Next, the racing is in the summer, so if the average temperatures are in the 80s or 90s, it's already hot. But add in that you're sitting in a heat generating machine for long periods of time, just soaking in that heat. On top of that, the track is hot, the pavement gets hot if the sun is out, and you have lots of other cars, over 100 in the Lemons case, all producing heat, and your own car doesn't get a break. That means all the air that you're surrounded by is hot, very hot. And lastly, you, the driver, are bundled up to the nines. You have a full Nomex set of underlayers. You then on top of that have a full race suit, which although soft is not vented as it's also flame resistant. You have gauntlet gloves on. You have a Nomex balaclava plus your helmet. You're strapped into a dark seat bolted right to the chassis of the car, which remember that thing we said gets progressively hotter? And without air conditioning or air vents, you have minimal airflow across the driver. Sure, you don't have any of your side windows, but the air that you do get is already hot, likely including a bunch of car exhaust fumes, and it's not going to be cool or refreshing. Enter the cool suit system. Companies like Paragon build turnkey systems which consist of a water tank that you can fill with ice, a pumping system wired into the car, and water lines to distribute that ice water to the driver. The driver can wear a special shirt or vest that has a webbed layer of hoses and then that ice water runs through those lines. This is worn directly against the driver's skin, providing critical cooling to your torso so you can stay sharp, but more importantly, avoid heat stroke or passing out. Wire that up to a toggle switch and you have on-demand cooling whenever you need it. That's what I'm building here today. So I hear you, why not just buy one of those systems? Well, you can. However, they're also quite expensive. The shirts themselves are anywhere from about $150 to $300 plus dollars, and the water tank and the pump with the lines cost over $1,000. But you can also build one for yourself. You still need the cool shirt, which you can make if you really want to, but for about a quarter of the cost, around $250, you can build the entire water tank and pump system, which will plug directly into the cool shirt. The parts you need are pretty simple, and I'll provide a full list in the description for what I'm building. The key feature you need is to have a dry brake valve system, like so, for both the cool shirt and the water lines. This allows you to quickly plug in, but also when you disconnect, the water doesn't spill from either of the hoses. Paragon sells these directly. The rest of the materials are pretty straightforward. You need a cheap cooler of some kind, like this radioactive looking thing. You need a bilge pump, from a boat or some sort of fish tank pump that's designed to be submerged in water. You need water lines to get water from the pump to the distribution lines. In my case, the inner diameter of this is three quarters inch. You need a few reducers and couplings as well as a bulkhead tube for going through the wall of the cooler. Then you need the water lines themselves, which for Paragon plugs into a 5 16 inch inner diameter. I needed about 24 feet of these, but I bought 40 feet since it was cheaper than the cut to length version of the hoses. You need some wiring and a switch for connecting into the car, as well as a toggle for the driver to turn it on and off. You need a small wire cage to protect the pump. With all the ice sloshing around in that cooler, it could easily damage the simple pump, so you want to protect it permanently. You need some sort of JB weld or epoxy to hold everything tight and to seal the holes through the cooler. 
some silicon sealant for more waterproofing, some Teflon tape to keep all of your threaded connections watertight, and lastly, if possible, some sort of insulation for these water lines to keep them as cool as possible, considering that that ice water has to traverse eight to 10 feet out to the driver and back again through what's very likely to be a very hot in car interior. All in all though, it's pretty simple. So let's get to it. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm marking out with a Sharpie where this cage is gonna go and where the pump needs to go. And there's a mechanism, a little lock over here on the side, which is gonna allow me to remove the motor later on if I want to. But I am gonna epoxy this little cage over it like this, and that this little 90 degree elbow is gonna line up with this hole so that my large clear tube can go out here. Now that large clear tube is gonna to go to somewhere over here on the side, and I'm gonna have basically a bulkhead fitting that punches through the side of the cooler, and that's where the outflow from the main line is gonna go. That's gonna then get reduced down through a series of connectors to this, which is 5 16 which is gonna then connect to these, uh, these hoses, and that's what's gonna run up to the driver. That's gonna then connect to these. So this is, one of these will be on the driver's suit, the other will be um, attached to the cooler lines. That's gonna run through the suit and then back out through the other line, back into the cooler. So I'm gonna have another hole here, which I'm probably gonna put this guy in, which is gonna just punch through and that's gonna spray water back into the, into the cooler. Lastly, I'm gonna have these power lines here are probably gonna go through a hole somewhere up on the side and as high up as I can to get them out of the cooler. I'm gonna use the silicon sealant so that I can keep that all watertight so there's no exposed wiring inside here. Um, and then real important, I didn't mention it, but you need to have a cooler that not only has latches, but also has a, a rubber or silicon gasket so that it stays waterproof. Everything's gonna be sloshing around and if you spill anything on the track, you'll get black flagged because they're not gonna know, is that coolant, is that gasoline, is that oil, or is it just water? So that's the rough idea. So first thing here is I've marked this out. And so next is probably mounting the pump, getting that epoxied in, getting the cage epoxied in, and then working on drilling out my hole. So I'll do that next. All right, so to show you a little bit about what the connector through the bulkhead wall of the cooler is gonna look like, I've got this. So this is designed for three quarters inner diameter barbed connection. This then goes into a three quarter inch uh, reducer, which reduces it down to a half inch. Then that connects here, which reduces it down to a quarter inch, which then goes to a 5 16th barb. Now what's gonna happen is I only need to drill a hole that's this size, this kind of smooth pipe, and that's gonna be what punches through the wall. So this is gonna be sticking through on this side. And the nice part about doing it with metal on the outside is it's a little bit stronger if something bumps it or it moves around at all. Um, and then on the inside, that barb fitting is gonna have the wide hose go to this part, reduce it down, and then that's gonna put pretty significant pressure, I'd imagine, through the water lines for the driver. Um, so that's that's how this looks. Unfortunately, there isn't a lot of great options, you know, locally available at least for bulkhead fittings. I'm sure, sure a marine supply place for bilge pumps probably has something. I looked online and there certainly are options, but I wanted to build this. I needed the parts as closely as I could get them uh, without having to wait. And so this is what I ended up with. But you can see it's a fairly stra straightforward, simple setup. And so, yeah, we'll continue. All right, I'm getting my epoxy ready. And one of the things I did is I used a little 100 grit sandpaper to scuff up the place where I'm gonna put this, as well as to scuff up the bottom of the mount for the pump itself. So that'll help the epoxy bond. So that was the kind of the first step. All right, so I've got the epoxy going and I've got a big block of wood. I'm gonna let that cure for about 15 minutes. It's 24 hours till it fully hardens, but the setting time is about 15 minutes. So I'm gonna give that a little time. All right, so this is well attached. I went and got lunch in the meantime, and now it is super attached. Uh, it takes up to 24 hours to fully cure, but for setting initially, it's more than strong enough. All right, so I used a one inch drill bit. Uh, the pipe that's gonna go through is 0.85 inches. So 
it's a little bit smaller. You can see there's some space, but I'm gonna fill that with caulking and some epoxy, so it won't be a problem. But you can see, this is now gonna go through, and then obviously these couplers are gonna go on the opposing sides, and that's gonna give me a watertight seal in and out, and I'm not gonna drill any holes in the bottom of the cooler, so everything should stay pretty waterproof. All right, I've also drilled another hole for the return, which will go right in here. And this will get epoxied in, so it just sticks a little ways in here, but then I'll still be able to connect the hose coming back from the suit. Um, and so my next step is I'm gonna go out and epoxy these outside, because the smell of that epoxy is pretty bad, and uh, I'll be back shortly. All right, I have now epoxied my outlet and my inlet, as well as I've drilled a hole over here, so you can see for the power cords to come out of the cooler uh, once I do that. So that's progress. All right, so you want to Teflon tape the fitting that's gonna go uh, into the kind of bulkhead connection for getting out of the cooler. There we go. We don't have to go crazy tight, just kind of as far as I can do it by hand should be more than enough to be watertight. All right, so now I've got the tubing cut to the right length. I've got the fitting attached to the pump and I've got my cage in here. I haven't epoxied it yet because there's an interesting challenge I have here. If I go and epoxy it in, I can never access or remove the pump or replace it. But what I've found is that because the tube is sort of threaded through here, this is pretty well like in place. It's metal, so it's gonna sink. Ice is gonna float if there's water in here. And then even if stuff kind of hits against it, it's already braced against two of the sides of the, of the uh, container. So I don't actually think I'm gonna attach it yet. We'll see. If, if we try it and it breaks or, or the pump gets damaged, then maybe I will. But I don't really wanna dr drill a hole in the bottom to like, I don't know, use some sort of loop fastener to attach it to the bottom, but that would be removable. So I think that's the route that I'm gonna go. So my next step is I need to reduce this three quarters down to five sixteenths so that I can get my barb fitting for the water outlet line. And then I'm essentially done. I'm gonna have to run some wires here and then obviously I wanna test it. Um, but yeah, we're, we're getting to the home stretch. All right, so I took a small piece of the tubing that I bought. I only need a certain amount and so I have plenty of extra and I, connected the outflow line to the inflow line. And then I made a little piece here that's just gonna sort of direct the spray downwards as it comes out. Because this is reducing a large hose down to a small hose, the pressure is gonna be something like four or five times as powerful uh, in here. And I don't know the math on it, but I know that it will be a lot higher pressure. So this is probably gonna be blasting water when this is connected. I'm now gonna pull the lines out here and then I'm gonna do a quick test, put some water in it, and uh, we'll see how it looks. All right, so I grabbed a battery that I was charging from the basement. I've got the pump here, and I'm just gonna connect the positive. So look at that. That's a pretty consistent rate of flow. And so we'll have that wired up to a toggle switch. And that, my friends, is pretty awesome. Very impressed. All right, so now I have my own cool suit system. All in all, for about an hour or so worth of work, plus a little bit of hunting down to get all the right parts, it saved me over $750 to do it myself. And I have the benefit of knowing exactly how it works. And I can replace the parts if needed. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. And until next time, Fred out.